Grand Rising, my friends. Welcome back if you have joined me before, if this is your first time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited. I was sitting here, been, you know, it's been a... Didn't think so, but now I'll go jump into it uh, with a little bit of juice. So... Hey, everybody, hope your, your, your energy level is raised. If not, we got to figure out how to make it so. It is under our control, more so than most people think, and that is the truth. So with that said, we're here for positivity, and if there's someone you admire, like, or respect, and you want them to know it, go ahead and say something nice about them in the comment section and forward them this video and say, hey, go, go check out the comments and see what I wrote about you. Um, you want to, you know, give them a boost in their day. Give them a little bit of that, that rush. Get near the end of the week as we travel further along in the secret history of the world, deep into the mysteries that are evident, but in so much in our everyday life. As I said before, before we go on, and as always, without, without um, you know, any questions that this is never, ever financial advice or, uh, or medical advice or any type of advice in any type of way. This is just for entertainment purposes, for you to kind of get a peek behind some of the things that I think about and see and wonder and just put it out there to see what it, what it may be. Now, this is amazing news. Hey, I, you know, I didn't know it would come this soon, but I should expect it. You know, the there's going to be times I, I need to explain. I'm looking at the screen and reading the, the, the title already before I say it out loud. And I have to say some people are going to be watching this or listening to it without watching the screen. I'll try to be more mindful to uh, point out the things that I'm seeing on the screen or saying on screen. Moderna starts human trials for its revolutionary HIV vaccine this week. This week, the biotech company Moderna will start human trials for its HIV vaccine. Its HIV vaccine will be the first of its kind to use messenger RNA, an approach that Moderna used in its effective COVID-19 vaccine. The clinical trials will start on August 19th and end sometime around spring 2023. And now they're telling people in advance, and, and you can even imagine, I'm not even going to get into this right now, but they're giving everybody the information up front. And then they go say, but you told us in advance, and now we can't believe you. <laughs> you can't wear it sometimes. According to the National Institute of Health Trial Registry, they will involve 56 HIV negative participants age 18 to 56. The participants will be given one or two forms of M uh, messenger MRA that causes the body to form defenses against HIV infection. In the past, HIV vaccines used inactivated forms of the virus. However, previous trials showed that these forms didn't produce any immune responses. In fact, researchers canceled one trial in Thailand during the 2000s after in in inactivated forms of the virus were found to actually increase people's risk of catching HIV rather than preventing infections. Moderna's trial is going to contain two different types, uh, messenger MRA, 1644 and MRA 1644 volume two, it looked like V2. <laughs> and so they're trying to help develop pro uh, spike proteins similar to what they did with uh, COVID. And so they, they talked a little bit more in here about there's so many variants, like 16 variants already. This is especially helpful for HIV since the virus is known for having mutated into at least 16 known variants. Then they talk about it, the fact that how it's gonna go through the clinical trials Phase one, phase two, when it will uh, go through phase three, it will compare the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine against current HIV prevention medications. So it's going to be some time. They still have to go through all the trials. Then if it, if it passes the three trials successfully, uh, then they will submit it to the FDA, who will then put it through phase four testing for uh, widespread testing and cost analysis. So we, we, it's a little bit of time before this comes to, to, uh, to play, but 
hey, this this is um this is uh amazing things. And I say I think this is just the beginning of, of the type of healthcare changes that are going to be on the horizon because genetic engineering combined with artificial intelligence, I don't think in this decade, but I may be wrong. Hey, I don't even know that we're gonna get deep into quantum computing, but it's gonna revolutionize how we're able to manipulate the the nature of our being. Elon Musk says SpaceX will probably be ready to land humans on moon before 2024. So Elon just put a tweet out. He was responding to someone else. They were saying like, oh, you know, uh, NASA, they're, they're, uh, they're saying that this is a problem and this is a problem. The problem is this, the spacesuits. The problem now is that Jeff Bezos Blue Origins is suing NASA because, it, you know, twice lost out to SpaceX uh, human lander plan so somebody was like would you know would spacex be able to land on the moon by 2024 and, and elon responded responded like eh, probably sooner <laughs> so you know and that just go of course rile people up and but you, you know and this is probably where you know we, at some point we'll probably talk about starship soon starship is getting ready for his orbital flights with Starship Super Heavy. Starship being the um, the top space, the second stage basically that will have. It talks about it on here, I believe. Uh, the, 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 the Starship Starship is capable of carrying a hundred people at a time to the red planet. This is, not, this is the most ambitious day. But to finish that point off, Starship is the second stage, super heavy, the booster is the first stage. And they are, if I'm not mistaken now, they are stacked presently. They, Starship is on top of super heavy and they're gonna start the testing for the preparations to start testing for the first orbital test. And we're 2001. So by the time that 2000, and so, you know, the plan with, and we haven't talked about the plan of the gateway and the Artemis mission yet, so I apologize for just as if I'm just saying it for people who don't know. But the NASA's current plan, if you're not aware, is they're going to use this rocket called the um, SLS, I believe. Uh, it's, it's created by a, a conglomerate of, a, of other companies that used to work for the old space program with the Challenger and stuff. It's similar uh, technology. And the plan is they're going to use that rocket, which still hasn't. I don't, if I'm not mistaken, but you can double check. That's not going to orbit yet. But that's supposed to take our astronauts to the gateway, which is going to be a satellite in orbit around the moon. Um, not even a satellite. It's a space station that we're going to have around the moon in an orbit. And then from there, they'll take the starship, a specialized starship built for to just ferry uh, individuals to the moon. It's not designed to come back to the Earth. But this starship will then take them from the gateway to the moon surface. So my point of it being that all these pieces are supposed to be in place before 2024. And I'm like, the only thing that appears is going to be in place by that is going to be starship able to go to the moon and back to Earth. <laughs> uh, or, or able to go to moon, ferry it to a a different uh, starship that is designed to carry out the role of the human lander system and then bring them back to the uh, orbit of the moon and place them back into a starship that can then survive reentry into Earth's atmosphere because I don't see any other partners get anything done. And, and this is where we have these projects that go on for a decade over. So, you know, that's where you see the power of private sector, how it's able to move faster and more efficiently than of, of something that's heavily federally managed and regulated. So, but at the same time, you can have uh, a lot of uh, abuses that occur without uh, proper oversight. It's, it's, a, it's a balancing act like anything as well. But this is, you know, fascinating showing that um, SpaceX is, is, is still head and shoulders above 
every competitor across the globe. I mean, look, you know, you see imitation is the sincerest, sincerest form of flattery. And the Chinese are imitating, um, everyone is imitating what SpaceX has done with the reusable rockets. And, you know, there are plenty of Chinese companies that are Im uh, imitating what Elon Musk is doing. Moving on to the to the world of crypto. I think we go probably dance out with crypto. Um, basically, hey, this is what we were looking for in here. Walmart is, is looking at hiring a crypto expert pushed towards digital <clears throat> currency. Walmart Inc. is looking to hire a cryptocurrency expert to develop a blockchain strategy, joining a growing number of major corporations exploring the viability of digital currencies such as Bitcoin. The position will be responsible for developing the digital currency strategy and product roadmap and identifying crypto related investment partnerships, according to a job posting Saturday on the retail giants website. So it's going to be based in Arkansas, their corporate offices, and they all talked about the recruitment effort by Walmart come several weeks after a similar job posting by rival Amazon.com Inc., indicating that the biggest retailers in the U.S. may soon let customers use cryptocurrencies to pay for their purchases and also put cryptocurrencies on their balance sheets. Game theory. What do you do when you when you when your competitor do it? When your competitor does it, what do you do? You go sit there and just uh, that's what got to get. Look, this is going off into a crazy tangent, but that's what got the United States off into a lot of our search research into a paranormal oh, in terms of the United States military researching remote viewing. A lot of fields of parapsychology is because they thought the Russians were doing it. And even now, um, we talked a little bit about hypersonic technology, and now we have developed our hypersonic weapons to compete with and the countermeasures to deal with the hypersonic weapons. But a lot of this talk of these UAPs slash UFOs or what's that? I don't know what that is. Those, you know, could it be some of them man-made? That some of them is technology that the United States or other other nation states have developed and are 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 trying to perfect. Possibly that's but that's that's a whole other. <laughs> uh, so well, Walmart and and Amazon are getting into crypto, which is exciting, but that also leads to. As we say, boom, 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 boom. The scumbags come into play as well. So dark web criminals have built a tool that checks for dirty Bitcoin. And so dark, dark web tool, antanalysis, antanalysis lets criminals check their level of risk before trying to cash out crypto earned from crime. So I'm guessing this was some algorithm that you would run through a program, your Bitcoin, send it, you know, it will be able to, you, you probably send it your address and it reads through and can tell. And Bitcoin, if, for those who don't know, you can trace back where that Bitcoin came from. I mean, and that's why Bitcoin has never been considered um, some, oh, untraceable cryptocurrency. Oh, no, crypto, Bitcoin is, uh, uh, that's the whole thing. It's a distributed ledger everyone has a copy of. So, of course. It's just difficult if you don't know what you're doing, but you know what you're doing. Like a lot of these firms who now are making their career off of it. Yeah, they can trace it. So you can tell where it was mined, if it was mined um, uh, with environmental concerns, if it was mined by, uh, you know, hey, look, you know, some uh, some people will call them terrorists some people call them freedom fighters, individuals somewhere around the world. You would be able to... Uh, trace the Bitcoin back to its origin. So if it came from um, illicit means, it's dirty. Now there's ways that and we'll talk about that another point, but I mean, for, you know, for just, you know, knowledge purposes, but you know, you shouldn't be worried about having to use stuff, but you can supposedly there's ways you can um, take the Bitcoin and run it through a, almost kind of like a card shuffler and, 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 and wash it that way, but I think we shouldn't. You shouldn't even be worried about stuff like that. Anyway, so 
So Bitcoin earned from dark net markets, ransomware, and theft are considered to be an extreme risk by Bitcoin from exchanges and freshly minted coins are classified as no risk assets. The assessment helped criminals work out. I just went right past it. So it's a newly discovered tool. You know, it, it, whoop, guess what? It was already shut down. <laughs> When I first saw that initial two, almost less than a day later, it was already shut down. So good thing. And and the host of the site, uh, Antanalysis, shut down today after any money laundering software AML bot from which Antanalysis pulled the data cut off their third party service. So they must have had some API, which allows you to, you know, they, they allow people to register to use their data. And so yeah. this weekend, blockchain security analysts, uh, analyst, analysts discovered a dark web tool called Antanalysis that produces criminal that produces criminal risk reports. Oh, that produces criminal risk reports, which can be used to identify illicit Bitcoin. The sudden attention has, however, forced the tool to shut down as one of its service providers, AMLBot, cut off access. AMLBot confirmed a decrypt in a statement today that the company, which unwittingly provided an Antanalysis with access to a service, made an internal investigation and shut down the Antanalysis account. The AMLBot is itself a reseller for Crystal Blockchain, another blockchain analytic tool. So these people are like Russian dial of uh, information sellers, information brokers. But so, yeah, I mean, that's the that's the problem. So it's not so easy just to use cryptocurrencies for crime in a very small amount is even though the nowhere near as much as money, fiat money. Uh, in that regard, so but you you hear a lot of people talk about but but, but the crime and a ransomware, but the crime. The first ransomware, I think, who was I was watching John Oliver. Yeah, the first ransomware was some floppy disk and mail. <laughs> Digital currencies are making financial independence a reality. Kickstarting a fresh concept. That is not kickstarting, but people have fired a concept of financial independence. Retire early, way before. The change in landscape of investing and the rise of access to technology has led to a newer generation of investors adopting cryptocurrency as a financial instrument. People are now moving towards achieving financial independence and retiring early. What is retirement? You know, what, what is what is our purpose? And, and that becomes the bigger question when, when you think about that that question like what are what are you trying to do and so here not what i think we should be thinking of but i don't want to think for anybody to say what i am thinking of is you know they do call it has a term fu money but you know i think that's a little bit of you know that may be could be aggressive i see it as just being in a place where that money is not a concern now if you now look you know, you remember that book came out a couple of years ago. People asked, what's your number? And when people ask me that, I say a trillion. And so with that, you would think like, oh, I'm just obsessed with it. I said, no, not, not in that regard. I just see myself and know that if it ever become to that point, that's what, you know, whatever. Do, what, I say, actually, I say 2.6 trillion. One day I'll share, we're going to talk about the... Um, some steps from the uh we'll I'll, I'll do kind of a run through of a, a book maybe i'll do the run through of books that are um i feel help kind of give you the mindset to be really successful and one of them is think and grow rich and i tell people like you know he only named it that just because you know you know it's like clickbait <laughs> clickbait a, a book for the really the book is about how to how to better oneself to self-actualize and create your reality in this plane um you know find your purpose and make it so and so you know and there is how much money you need and i say about 2.6 trillion you know that way after taxes they still i still got over a trail a trilly a trail i'll go with trilly trail anyway and that's just because at the end of the day you know, I used to think, oh, I'm going to work really hard for years and then retire and have fun. And then I realized that's silly. That's a silly way of life. You know, what make more sense is, and I learned this years ago, is that I work every day and I vacation every day. 
every day. I work every day and I vacation every day. I'm going to do what needs to be done to make things better for myself, my family, you know, the, the things, God, number one. But in, in, in anytime I speak about anything, no, that's always number one. I, I, I won't I don't have to say it every time I want to beat you over the heads with it. And, and sometimes I may feel like I need to. So, hey, but God, number one. And I need to do what I do. Am I doing what needs to be done to make the creator happy? Um, but my family, those I love, things I love. But I'm going to work and I'm going to vacation every day of my life. And I'm going to be happy. And I'm choosing to be happy. I'm choosing to look for the happiness. And light finds light. Then that it starts to just flow towards you in that way. And I remember thinking this years ago and learning this and saying, man, I'm sitting here poor with nothing. <laughs> with a dream. I got nothing but a dream. But I'm going to live this dream. And now years later, it, it's even better than I could have imagined. And it's going to be even greater. Because that's my intention, you know? So when it talks about financial independence and retiring early and using cryptocurrency or real estate or later on in, the, in a couple of days, we'll talk about how Palantir is buying up a bunch of gold and getting dipping they, getting they starting to get build up their crypto stores. You know, that that's that's man. I, I when I start thinking about that, it's like man, why are they building up about uh, five hundred million? Why is Palantir buying five hundred, I mean fifty million in green gold? Like, huh, man, what, what do they know? <laughs> Sorry, but we'll come to that story in a couple of days. But you know, it's out there. The um, you have to find what makes you content and. It's, it's not a problem to dream big. You should dream big because it, no, one else, no one else can dream for you. You know, no one else can dream for you. And so easy way I say is like this buy and hold dollar cost average. We'll talk about different investment strategies. But, you know, for the, the easy and safe way to get started, if you're not. Now, look, you can do anything you. Oh, OK. Well, we'll talk about this. Thing. Hey, you can do anything you want. But at the end of the day, um, do something, you know, but I don't want you to lose money. And until you know exactly what you're doing, some of these are more dangerous than others. The super easiest is the, or the, the bottom two here. I mean, not bottom two, but these two, mining and staking. You know, we talked about that in a couple of days where, you, you know, we're going to try to figure, you got to figure out in, um, in, in crypto, how do you make money? Damn, I'm doing them videos. How do you make money? <laughs> uh, and so, but we, you know, we can start mining and that just people were like, oh, but this time like, but you got to be thinking like 10 years down the line. That'd be a good video. Think how to think exponentially. And staking is when you have there's like probably on it's probably maybe more, but I believe on a Coinbase, if you have a Coinbase account, there are probably four, I believe, like four cryptocurrencies and two stable coins that as long as you just buy it, you accrue interest on the ones you have. So you earning like four to like eight percent interest on now the eight percent stuff may be on uh, the Exodus wallet, but and that's so you know and that's just easy things. It's just putting your money in, whatever your money in is 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 building on itself that compound interest. But we're gonna talk more about this at some point. What is what is financial independence? You know, would would your life be fulfilled if you was just on a beach every day? I say for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, you'd be it'd be good. But you, I, I, and and you know, like I said, I just know myself, and I can only speak for me, and and that's not um, that's why. So some people might like, hey, they, that may be a great existence for them. Now I'm just rambling and going all off, so. Crypto market ain't been too happy the past day or so. You know what I'm saying? But, okay. Cardano's starting to make a little bit of a move up. So you got Bitcoin 
negative over the 24 hour, but these are tiny amounts. But Cardano was up until almost right like 220s. It's going down up a little bit. Solana, hey, Solana, hey, look, that. I knew I should have bought some of that probably like about, it was like about maybe back in like May, April or May when I was looking at that. Or maybe like June. It was something after everything had dropped. I was looking at that, but all right. Terra, not too familiar with Terra Project. Have to look into that one. Actually, I got my several that I, that I go and I, you know, I, I'm not even, I don't get caught up into all the hype of this and that, these projects. I don't even trust nobody when they be like, oh, this and that. And that. Hey, look, end of the day, if you ask me, and we'll, we'll do way more in depth at this at some point. Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's why I tell people, buy Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano. <laughs> now, look. If you, you know, it depends on how much money if you got. If you if you don't have much money, whatever you got, I would do about 70, 30 in Bitcoin, Ethereum. And if you're like, oh, but I got but Bitcoin so much. I got is it a million dollars yet? Is it a million dollars yet? Okay, it's not. But, all right. I understand people just like, they, they want to own holes of something. So if you need to own some holes of something, then, yeah, buy Cardano. And every now and then when you just, when, when, it, when the market go down, you can buy probably some Doge and and don't shoot me, but I've been buying Shiba Inu or I, I may have. I don't know. I, maybe, but I don't know. Sometimes it's just be play. Don't ask me no questions behind it. This stuff works. But yeah, don't 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 slip up on Bitcoin. It has a lot of room to go. It has some a crazy future in front of it um ethereum as well believe cardano a lot of don't you binance coin now hey, look all of these at some point or another i've owned binance coin uh do, 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 uniswap chain link litecoin rap bitcoin ethereum classic tron <laughs> e eos monero Look, I can, we can go through. I, 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 I've been sucked into all these programs. IOTA. And don't get it twisted, though, too, with the um, Cosmos, Algorand, <coughs> Tezos. Oh, that's what number. Boop, can I hit that with that? All right, well, look, we'll be here all day. I love this stuff. I love you. You love yourself. God loves us. And that's all that matters. <laughs>